Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we'll be talking about the simplification of a force and a couple system. Let's start with answering the question why. Let's say we have a, a body that looks like this, it doesn't have a specific shape, and this body is being affected by these forces from F1 all the way to F6 and three concentrated moments and assuming that we want to know the reactions or the effects of these forces or this system on point O, which is located somewhere along the body or inside the body. Okay, so our goal is to go from the system on the left to this system, which has one force, which is a resultant force, and of course because it's a vector, you need to specify along with its magnitude, its direction, and we want to represent all the moments, and all the moments produced that, uh, by these forces by a single resultant moment. So again, we want to go from the system from the left all the way to the system on the right to make life easier for us. But the big question is how? Let's start with this body two forces only and two concentrated moments. The first step toward simplifying this system is by resolving the forces into its component, the Y and the X components. As we can see, we resolve F1 into F1 in the Y and F1 in the X and F2 into F2 in the X and F2 in the Y. The second step is by specifying the perpendicular distance from each component to the y and x axis as shown in this figure. After doing this, we need to apply these th equations. The first equation is the summation of the forces in the x. If we sum the forces in the x, we get the x component of the resultant force. And if we sum the forces in the y, we get the y component of the resultant force. As for the third equation, it's divided into two parts. It's easier to look at it this way. Sigma M O plus Sigma M. Assume that Sigma M O is the summation of the moments about O and just think about the concentrated moments, which in our case here is M1 and M2. For sigma m, the second part of the equation, is the summation of the moments produced by the components f1x, f1y, f2x, f2y about point O. Looking at our example, let's do the summation on the forces in the x. So we have sigma fx equals minus f1x plus f2x and if we sum the forces in the y, we get sigma fy equals minus f1y minus f2y. Now, to calculate the resultant, again, the square root of the sum of the squares. And for theta, we take the, uh, the inverse of the tangent, and we take the absolute value of fry over fr in the x direction. If we try to do the summation of the moments about point O to get the resultant moment, we will have M1 minus M2, again, the first bracket is just for the concentrated moment, and that refers to the first part of the equation, which is sigma MO, and in this case, our counterclockwise moment is positive. Then, we think about the components one by one, we take each component, multiply multiply it by the perpendicular distance to the point of interest, in this case O. Let's go over them very quickly. F1x multiplied by D1y plus negative 1y multiplied by D1x, and since it's negative, it's clockwise, plus negative F2x times D2y, and lastly, plus F2y multiply by d2x. So we simplified the system from the above to whatever you see on the screen right now. This way, we can simplify bigger systems into a single force and a single couple or, or single concentrated moment. We will be doing two examples. So let's start with the first example. Example one. Replace the force and couple system by an equivalent force and couple moment about point O. 
we want to simplify this system into a single force as a single moment. So the solution is applying these three equations. For me to apply these equations, especially the first two, I need to know the components because remember, everything has to be on the X and the Y because I'm trying to get the summation of the forces in the X direction and summation of the forces in the Y direction. So if I resolve them as shown, I will have the following. Let's do the summation of the forces in the X. If I do the summation of the forces in the X, I will have 6, 5 over 13 minus 4 cosine 60, and that will give me 0 0.30769 kilonewtons. If I do the summation of the forces in the Y, I will get 6, 12 over 13 minus 4 sine 60, and I'll get 2.0744 kilonewtons. Now, I apply the square root of the sum of the squares to get the magnitude of the resultant, and I'll end up having 2.1 kilonewtons. And if I take the inverse of the tangent, I'll have 2.0744 over 0 0.30769, and I'll have 81.6 degrees. Now, if I apply the third equation, which is the summation of the moment, I will get sigma mo plus sigma m. How many concentrated moments I have? I have only one, which is the 8 kilonewton meter, and it's counterclockwise, so it's positive, so that's 8 plus negative 6, 12 over 13, that's the force, multiplied by the perpendicular distance, which is 4, plus 6, 5, 13, which is the force, multiplied by, by the perpendicular distance, which is 5, minus 4 cosine 60, that's the force, multiplied by 4, which is the perpendicular distance. And I will have negative 10.62 kilonewtons. So it's a negative, so the resultant moment is clockwise. Basically what I did, I transferred this system into this system. Now you can see the difference. This The, the system on the right is way easier to deal with if you want to carry on any kind of calculation. Let's do the second example. Replace the force system acting on the post by a result, resultant force and a couple moment at point O. Basically, the same procedure. I need to apply these equations. First two equations says that all the forces has to be resolved into X and Y components. Otherwise, I cannot add them up in the, in the X direction or in the Y direction. So I resolve the forces as shown. If I apply them, I will have 300 cosine 30 minus 150 5 over 4 plus 200. That will give me 339.81 pounds. Now, if I apply the summation of the forces in the y direction, I will have 300 sine 30 plus 150 3 over 5, and that will give me 240. Now I get the resultant force by taking the square root of the sum of the squares and I will have 416.02 pounds, which is approximately 416 pounds. And then for the angle, I'll take the uh, inverse of the tangent, which is 240 over 339.81. Take uh, 10 inverse and I will have 35.23. That should give me 35.2 to make it simpler. Now if I take the summation of the moments, I can see that I don't have any concentrated moments about or in the system in general. Again, assuming that the counterclockwise is positive, I will only have the moments produced by the components. About point O, you will realize that two of the components, as shown in the figure, will pass through the point of interest, so they will not produce any moments. In this case, I will have the following. 150, 4 over 5 times 4, minus 200 times 2, minus 300 cosine 30 times 6. The 4, the 2, and the 6 are the distances, and the 150, 4 over 5, the 200, the 300 are the forces. And if I sum them up, I will have negative 1,478.85 pound feet or pound foot. So what I did is I transferred this system with all its 
forces into this system with a single force and a single concentrated moment at the point that I specified in the first or in the beginning of the questions. So that's it for today. I hope we learned something new and I'll see you in future tutorials. Thank you.